on walking. Descartes came out with a famous remark, which was the basis of his philosophy, cogito ergo sum, I think, therefore I am. Perhaps I would like to update that to, I walk, therefore I am. Or in Latin, solvita ambulando, it is solved by walking. We think of uh, various human activities um, like eating and sleeping and uh, drinking and so on, but we don't always add in walking. And yet, for me, walking is really one of the most important of my activities. Indeed, I think when I was asked to name my hobbies, I couldn't think of anything. This was for who's who or something. So I played, uh, put in uh, listening to music and walking. And indeed, throughout my life, it has been one of the joys and recreations. I suppose as an infant, I can't remember anything about walking around in India, but certainly when I got to Dorset at the age of six, it was beautiful country round about um, the heaths and woods that... Um, were described in various uh, novels and I started to enjoy going for bicycle rides and walks across these um, areas around our house which was quite remote and this continued perhaps not at school I don't remember many walks at my boarding school but certainly when we got to the Lake District we moved to a, a cottage which was in the valley where Wordsworth had been brought up and went to school at Eswatdale. And he was a great walker, and a lot of his famous poem, The Prelude, is describing some of his walks and the moments of inspiration they caused him. And I followed his walks uh, self-consciously from about the age of 16, going to places which he described in his poetry, and then at 17, going around the walk, he went through continental Europe down to Italy. And I followed that route. So in the Lake District, I used to go walking, particularly with my grandfather, my uncles, my sisters, and often on my own behind our house and down to the lake, combined with fishing, my great passion. And at my boarding school in Yorkshire, it was set in beautiful mountains, and we were enormously encouraged to walk. There were, when there was a half holiday, which was a great event, particularly in the summer, then you had to go out more than three miles. You had to be three miles out of the town at whatever it was, three o'clock in the afternoon. So you had to do minimally walk six miles. And I went for many great walks over those um, peaks uh, and this was something, I did, again, I did with my friends. And a walk was something which cemented friendship and uh, encouraged conversations. Later, walking included walking in the Hebrides, where my parents bought a croft, walking in the Himalayas a good deal. When we, when we went to do field work in the Himalayas, the village was about six, seven hours walk away from the nearest town. Very steep, sort of three, four thousand feet climb up. And it was an arduous walk, but beautiful, beautiful scenery with butterflies and flowers and so on and so on. And then latterly in the Fens where we live, uh, every day Sarah and I conscientiously go for a walk. Uh, 30 minutes or, or so every day and sometimes longer down into the fens. Entirely different country, huge open skies and um, reeds and uh, boggy grounds, but lovely. So why all this walking? Well, there is something about walking which relaxes you, uh, rather like many other things like cooking and so on, so that your mind is free. And so 
As I said, walking solves many problems. I start off on a walk thinking about something, and by the time I finish the walk, often I've solved it. The very action. And it also allows for a sort of deep intimacy. You often walk alongside someone. So many of my deeper friendships, like with Jerry Martin or uh, Michael Bryant or many others, we've had projects we're working on, um, books or computer projects, and we get to a certain point, and then we say, let's go for a walk. And so we go off, no particular di direction, just rambling, and most of the time is a quite intense conversation, but then suddenly one of us will see something and say, oh, look, you see the flowers are coming out there, or there's an interesting stone, or whatever. And so it's punctuated walking, and it gives us that sense of progress. I think this is part of the charm of walking, is that it's, um, like all of our life, it's a sort of adventure, it's a discovery, because no walk is the same. Sarah and I walk around the same sort of one mile and a half along a river, small river bank under trees every day. But because the season is moving on and uh, there are different sights and smells and the weather is different, it feels fresh and new every day. And likewise, the walks around the garden, which are terribly important. I mentioned this in an, another talk on paths, but the winding paths through the garden. And so we have what I call my thinking path, the, or the philosopher's walk, and that just the five minutes of that. And of course, it, it all depends on your frame of mind. If you go off in a rage or miserable, then the walk is often of no um, special benefit. But I suppose the breathing in of deep air, and one knows, one feels a sense of virtue too, because many studies now suggest that walking is extremely good for your health if you do a fairly brisk mile or two every day. It's supposed to add on a, a few hours to your life. And since I have, as with Sarah, a great deal to do in the rest of my life, although I'm already 80, I want to continue with a healthy and intellectually healthy life for as long as possible. And so I feel in these walks that I can boost my blood levels and all the rest of it. And so far, it seems to have worked. Now, I don't know whether you walk, uh, you viewers walk, and many of you may say, well, I don't live in the Himalayas or in a beautiful Fenland village, what can I do? Well, you can really walk anywhere more or less. I suppose there are a few places that it's pretty difficult, but even in towns and cities, I suppose there it depends on the timing, that if you go early in the morning or late in the evening, it's quieter. But for us, any time of day is good. I tend to like to work in the morning, so we put off our walk till before lunch and uh, longer walks, and one of the walks goes up alongside the old load, as it's called, which means um, canal built by the Romans, up to a little pub about a mile and a half up the little river. And so occasionally in the summer, as a special treat, we go for a walk up there, have a traditional English supper, and then walk back. And often I walk through Cambridge, and there it's a matter of walking through a land of ghosts, great people who have been there and on the walks before me. And I think of them, and I think of all my past friends in various parts of Cambridge, many of them are gone. So walks, memory, exercise, thinking are all a very positive bundle, and I hope that my who's who a statement that walking is my great pleasure will continue for uh, some years to come. Thank you for listening to this rambling account.